Matthew 13, verse 15 states, For his people's hearts have grown dull, and their ears are heavy of hearing, and their eyes have closed, lest they should perceive with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn to me to heal them. Hello, my name is Sandra Timko, and welcome to Lumen Christi. Has your relationship with Jesus grown dull? Has your time of worship become sleepy? Then meet and embrace the Holy Spirit so you can be whole and a new creature in Christ. This is the second segment of our time with Father Michael Sherry, who is from the Charismatic Order of Religious, the Companions of the Cross in Ottawa, Ontario. But he is being used in a huge way here in Detroit because we so desperately need the operational gifts of the Holy Spirit introduced to the church at Pentecost. I wanted Father to come and explain how important that sweet surrender to the third person of the Blessed Trinity truly is. My new friend in Christ Jesus, Father Michael Sherry, thank you for agreeing to stay a little longer. It's a blessing to be here. Well, your story to this point, um, just to give our viewers that missed the first segment, um, just a thumbnail. You were raised in a very balanced Catholic home, 11 children, good solid marriage. You uh, you loved the Lord from childhood. As a young man, you were even in love, contemplated marriage after a seven year relationship. But you're feeling this yearning after you went and experienced a weekend Life in the Spirit seminar. Right, that changed my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought I was a pretty good Catholic at the time and a pretty good person. Mm -hmm. But, you know, after that weekend when the Holy Spirit just came alive in me, mm -hmm. uh, we call that, we refer to it as the baptism of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. but it's not a, in a sense, it's not a new baptism, but it is, it is a new experience. It's like being baptized again because mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit comes in at baptism. Mm -hmm. and it's a baptism of fire. And I just, I, I understood the love of God and it changed my life. And uh, as I went through that experience, I started making decisions for God. He wanted me to come and serve him with everything. And, uh, and I chose him. And it's important again for the people that missed the first segment, and you might want to call your stations and ask them to rerun that, or watch it on YouTube or on our uh, website. You were a man of success. You were an educated man. You had been um, making a good deal of money. You were contented to some degree, and yet there was this drawing. So when you finally surrender, do you immediately sell all your goods and go off to the seminary? Well, I didn't, I didn't immediately sell everything, but what happened was, was when I made that decision to serve God, whatever he wanted me to do, it took me three months to get out of the business. And at the end of that three months, when I was out of being a stockbroker, uh, I sat down and prayed and I said, Lord, where do you want me to go? And, uh, you know, I had this kind of vision of wheat field out in Kansas, and it was ripe, and the wind was blowing across it, and it looked like waves. Mm -hmm. And then I saw this one lot of, of wheat with a rope around it, and there was a sign on it. It said, uh, Hannah House, Fort Smith. Hannah House is a home for other wed mothers that I helped start. I was the founder of it, and God used me to do that. And then it said, uh, Deacon, Diocese of Little Rock, Arkansas, being a deacon. And then there was Catholic World Relief and another one. And all these were the same size. But on the end, there was one that was taller than the rest, twice as tall. And it had Renewal Ministries, which was Ralph Martin out of mm -hmm. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I had met, uh, met Ralph about three months earlier. And uh, it's just like I looked down and I said, well, this one's twice as tall, Lord. This is where you want me to go. And, and I knew that. I just knew it in here. So I called him up and I said, hey, this is... Michael Sherry, I, I quit the brokerage business, and God wants me to come serve you. I'll do anything you want. He said, well, let me think about it and pray about it. The next week he calls me back, and, and I told him, I says, whatever you want me to do. He calls me back the next week and says, well, come on up. So I says, okay, and uh, I, went, I, I drove up the next week and on a Sunday and got there on a Sunday, and I went in the office. He told me to meet uh, a, a, a gal that worked in the office there, and uh, Sister Debbie. 
And uh, I said, my name's Michael Sherry, and Ralph, he said, yeah, yeah. So I used to be the stockbroker with a big office, and, you know, things are good. And she says, well, the first thing, if you would, could, could you empty the trash? Because they forgot to do it. Mm -hmm. I said, well, sure. But God gave me a servant's heart. Mm -hmm. And if God was going to take me anywhere, I can't believe that he took me there. And after three years there, in the, in the third year, I, uh, I knew that he wanted me to be a priest. That light came back on incredibly. And I could tell you many, many stories of confirmations mm -hmm. that were just just crazy. Just asking God, I said, show me what you want me to do. And, and every time he would mm -hmm. give me a confirmation. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, out of that, I, I knew that he wanted me to be a, a, a priest. So I started asking people. I said, well, Lord, where do you want me to go? And it was like, well, just ask people. So I started asking people, you know, any, you know, like the Jesuits, the Franciscans, uh, you know, the different orders, the Benedictines, uh, different dioceses, and and whatever I got, I would check out. I would call and talk to them in every place over the over six, seven month period. You know, I, I would go there and talk to them, and it, something would happen. You know, one one out of uh, in, Min, in in Minnesota, I called and. The, the guy said, sure, I'm, I'm going on vacation. Give me a call in two weeks, and we'll work out time for you. Come up with him right after that. So I thought that might be a place. And uh, I called back the two weeks later, and they said, well, um, what's this about? I said, well, I'm supposed to call him about vocations. He's in charge of vocations. Well, he had fell and broken his shoulder and wasn't going to be at work for a couple of weeks. So I struck him off because it it was out of the time. And God took me to Companions of the Cross. And... Uh, you know, I worked for Renewal Ministries, and that, with Ralph Martin and Peter Herbeck and Sister Ann Shields, incredible gifts that mm -hmm. God gave me. Mm -hmm. Incredible gifts. They're all in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. They all, they, 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 tremendous preachers, all of them. Mm -hmm. Gift of, gifted evangelists. They're all over the world. And I got to go, you know, I, I don't know, 16, 17 countries with them, off and on for three years. Let's, let's talk about the gifts, the individual gifts. You saw the operational gifts in action in these people. Mm -hmm. It takes surrender. And um, it, it's, it's such a beautiful outpouring. But we need to understand the importance of these gifts and also discernment. Um, it's so important to understand that the gifts are truly coming from the Holy Spirit because Satan is an imitator. So we have to be able to discern. So tell us the importance of each gift and how, how it takes us further when we surrender to them. How important the gift of tongues is, first of all. Tell us about the gift of tongues. Well, most people don't understand the gift of tongues because it, it's a foreign, mm -hmm. you, know, they, they, you know. The first time I went to a prayer meeting mm -hmm. uh, with my two sisters, mm -hmm. uh, who I stiff armed for two months before I went, uh, and that's how I got in the life and the spirit. Uh, they had opening, so opening songs, and they were raising their hands, and I was going, "Wait a minute, what's going on here? <laughs> I'm a good Catholic. <laughs> Is this a Pentecostal church or what?" And if the door would have been a little bit closer, I, I would have probably left. To be honest with you. Really, it made you that uncomfortable. I did. Yeah. Yeah, because it wasn't, you know, I was there with well, one of my sisters were, was there at that time, but. Uh, and then they started speaking something I didn't understand. I'm going, what in the world is that? That was praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it can't make you, because you don't understand it. When you don't have knowledge of something, mm -hmm. then you don't have the understanding. Mm -hmm. Understanding comes from knowledge. You don't have knowledge, you can't have understanding. Mm -hmm. And the understanding gives you peace. Mm -hmm. And so, like anything else in life, if you go into a dark room, I don't care who you are, even if you're in your own house, a lot of times you're, mm -hmm. there's a little nervousness. Mm -hmm. But when you flip that light on, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what discernment, in a sense, really is. Is, is, But, you, you know, in order to discern something th spiritually, y you have to be connected to God. Mm -hmm. y if you're discerning on your own flesh and your own mind, uh, then you, you not, may not connect with what God wants. And this is what happened to me. So as I went through this life in the Spirit, it changed my life. I was at the meeting every week. I, I started understanding the gift of tongues. In fact, when I was a paper boy, 
I could not sing songs. I, I couldn't remember the lyrics. But I would just sing non-syllable yeah. words, and it always gave me peace. Mm -hmm. And I did that on the way home all the time when I was a paper. I, I sur that was that was a gift, I think, of tongues mm -hmm. in a sense because sometimes I was just thinking about God and how He blessed my family, mm -hmm. and it always gave me peace. And so I just opened my mouth, and it just kind of came. I, I wasn't af I was afraid of it at first, but then it wasn't. But the gift of tongues is probably the easiest gift, mm -hmm. but it's it's hard for people to yield to that. Mm -hmm. Pride, pride. And, and pride is a big pride. thing. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, is that you have to understand, you, you just have to trust God. That's right. And trust the Holy Spirit. Open your mouth. And sometimes it's like priming the pump. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to help someone. Mm -hmm. Just start repeating something over and over. And just just look at Jesus. Look at Jesus' sacred heart. Now, two, two of the important features of tongues, I believe, are it's as individual as our fingerprints are. Each person's gift of tongues sounds different. That's right. And it is, um, other than the bloodline, praying by the power of the blood, Satan can't cross that. That's an individual gift given directly from God to each one of us. So it's a powerful, powerful tool of protection. Um, and the scripture says clearly, though, but in a in a crowd, in a group, we do need discernment of those tongues. So explain that a little bit. Well, when you humanly try to discern something, what are you using? You're your using, mind. You're mm -hmm. using your mind, mm -hmm. your intellect. Mm -hmm. And you're using that intellect, but when the Spirit of God and it is the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that helps you discern. Mm -hmm. When that comes in, you gain insight. Mm -hmm. And if you're walking with the Lord, that insight grows. Like, I didn't know, I really didn't discern very well. And I didn't have the gift of discernment because I wasn't practicing it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even really aware of it. I had human discernment. And sometimes there was a discernment that I think that, that I already had was part of a gift maybe mm -hmm. in, in spiritual things to a degree, but it wasn't really the true gift. It wasn't until I, I surrendered to the Lord and, and then the Holy Spirit came in a deeper way that when I started discerning, it's a learning process, just like mm -hmm. tongues. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have to trust it mm -hmm. and ask God. I use discernment all the time I, when I'm talking to people, even on the street, in confession. Counseling, I'm constantly, Holy Spirit, speak to me, mm -hmm. you know, the, and, and I'm discerning what is it that's going on in this person. And many times um, when I first started going to the prayer meeting and we were talking about all the different gifts, discernment was something that you have to kind of grow into. Mm -hmm. But it's out of that relationship through the power of the Holy Spirit with God that those gifts grow mm -hmm. and the understanding grows with it. Okay, hang on a minute. For anyone that's just tuning in and they're wondering, who is this man of such great wisdom? Well, this is a surrendered spirit. This is Father Michael Sherry. And he is a charismatic priest from the Companions of the Cross from Ottawa, Ontario. And he's talking about the operational gifts of the Holy Spirit, his conversion to a deeper place in Christ, and you actually serve with the Charismatic Renewal out of Detroit now. Mm -hmm. So you are at healing services, uh, seminars? Uh, I haven't been at many. I've been tied up in the parish and in some other activities. And, but I've been going to those some and, mm -hmm. and my activities are going to increase because some of the load I had, I've, I've changed. So let's talk about prophecy, okay? Explain prophecy for us. So is prophecy predicting the future? Um, it actually, you know, it's interesting because it says we're all prophets by the mere merit of us proclaiming the gospel. But I've had a prophetic gift since I was four. And um, the Lord gives me visions and they always, and they are always accurate. And it took a long time to understand. And my first spiritual director said, Sandra, there's one thing you must always remember, 
and that is that you can never withhold divine revelation. Twice I did it thinking that I would prevent hard feelings and it was a massive mistake. So I had to repent that. Um, does it tell the future? It prepares me for what is yet to come, who is coming for prayers, what's needed, where I'm to go to get something. Um, and I've only had three prophetic world, uh, words for humanity, and one came the night before 9-11. Mine are uh, more individual, but it does, it prepares you. And, okay, go ahead. So, so. Well, I'm kind of interested, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. So prophetically, mm -hmm. just asking the Lord, mm -hmm. maybe what do you see in me well, I, for, for a word of the Lord? Well, for a prophecy. I don't. I, you don't get I, it. N n right. No, I don't ask. It just comes. They just come. Right. And I only, I learned a new aspect of this in the past year. And that is where the visions are placed. Before they were just always sent uh, front and center. And in the last year, he's revealed to me something and it was about the placement in it. In other words, this is yet to come. This is in the present, Sandra, and this is coming, okay? And that was a whole new level of surrender and listening hard. It's hard work, it's a huge responsibility when it has to do with other people in their lives, showing me where they have cancer, showing me their need and, um, through a lot of prayer and fasting um, to give them proper understanding. And yes, very difficult. But everything that we do out of obedience, since obedience is greater than sacrifice, it always brings us to a newer understanding of who we are in the body of Christ and who he can be for us. True? True. It's just constant surrender, you know? And it, it, and. And that's the problem in the world today. Mm -hmm. it's a, to me, it's a problem in the church, mm -hmm. is that people don't want to totally surrender. Mm -hmm. You know, they just want to, a little bit, and I want to do my thing. Mm -hmm. I want to be in control. They want the insurance <laughs> of having him, but they still want to do it their way. They want to do it their way. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes that interferes with the gifts. Oh, yeah. It, it, you know, uh, you can only, the gifts are more active in you, and God will, they're more accessible to you, the more you surrender to him mm -hmm. and let him let yourself be used mm -hmm. because God is the one that gives them to us mm -hmm. and he will work only in us to that degree we surrender to him. Have you experienced in the gifts that you have, I've never asked anybody this, if you, and we all fall into sin, okay? So we sin and we repent, but the gift stops momentarily. Do you, you know what I'm saying? And all of a I'm sudden. I'm afraid I do. <laughs> yes. And all of a sudden, you hunger so desperately. Oh, but that was our connection. That's how I, you showed me all of this. I don't want to be without this. Not because it did anything for me personally, but because I knew that it was his will that I use it. And um, you've experienced that? Oh, yes. It, and, and it's like a little chastisement, sometimes my big chastisement, but it's a terrible longing, isn't it? The more terrible it is, in a sense, I think that it's a sign that I'm closer to God than I thought, mm. in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, but even even a little bit of, of distance from God, I, I notice it more than... Uh, if I do something wrong, if I get a little upset, if mm -hmm. I have some anger, or if I miss, I get busy, I miss some prayer times a couple of days in a row, I, I, I sense that. Mm -hmm. I, I, God is not as close. I, I don't have that connection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can't be without that. I know. You can't be without that. I don't want to be without mm -hmm. that. Okay. We've got like three minutes left. This time went way too fast. If somebody wants to talk to you, they, they feel they may have a vocation. And they need to talk to somebody that's really balanced and cool like this. A phone number, an email address? Sure, you can email me at F, as in Frank, R as in Robert, F-R, Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, C-C, Carlos Carlos. So 
at gmail.com. So that's F-R-M-I-C-H-A-E-L-C-C at gmail.com. Now, you have to have a favorite scripture. You got a favorite one? Well, the one I mentioned is my favorite. Okay. Um, the greatest commandment. To serve God with all. And that's the problem with the world, is that even even really good Catholics, I mean, I, I preach this in my parish all the time. I keep reminding them, I said, you know, is that we just give God a little bit. Look at how much God gives, gives us. us. Oh. He gives us everything. Mm -hmm. He gives us our whole family, our mm -hmm. jobs, our intellect. And how much do we give him back? Well, I'll go to church on, our, on Sunday or our in 10 minutes, and we're just missing all the blessing. He wants to give us even more. And if people will yield to him and spend time with him, it's amazing. Read some scripture. Start reading scripture every morning. We talked momentarily about tongues, about discernment. You've talked about um, understanding and knowledge. Um, healing. Healing is such a, a big subject because there's different types of healing. There's physical healing, emotional healing, intergenerational healing. Um, but there is a lot of people who believe strongly that many illnesses are the direct result of spiritual um, illness or sin, and our body can manifest and um, show signs of illness because of it. But being that said, any illness can be healed, true? Any illness, God can heal. Mm -hmm. And he does. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, I'll never forget when I, when I went to Renewal Ministries, and we were, I think, in, uh, we were in Ghana. And uh, we had about 6,000 people mm -hmm. attending this all-day Saturday. Um, and there were prayer sessions. There were talks, and then we had mass. There were more talks. And after each talk, they would pray with people. And on our team were these uh, two 19-year-old girls, or one 19-year-old girl, and another guy who was 18. And they were using them to pray, some with people. And all these people were coming up. And uh, I remember going to the bus, because it was hot, and you know, air conditioning on the bus worked. And so I took a break to go in there, and she was in there, and she was crying, because she felt worthless. She, she, she was praying with people, and she did, nothing was happening. And we were trying to explain to her, it's God that heals. Mm -hmm. Your call is just to mm -hmm. have faith and instrument. ask God to come. Mm -hmm. and anyway, so uh, someone came and got me. I need, had to go do something, so I went and helped with something. And, and then I came back to the bus about 30, 40 minutes later and got some more water. And I was sitting in there, and I hear this big roar, the crowd, and it's people just. So I go back out, and I, I kind of walk. Well, this girl was up on the stage and she saw this crippled boy and he was I think eight or nine years old and had never walked in his life. In fact his legs were so thin. Mm -hmm. And she 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 asked him, she said, bring your son up here. And and the mother said, you know, can you pray for him? And she said yes. And she prayed over him. And she felt like he God was healing her. And he, she literally they told me this, grabbed his hands and said, Stand up and walk. God said, stand up and walk. And he got up and he started taking steps real slow, real slow. And by the time I got around, it took me a good five minutes. She was holding one hand and he was walking across the stage. Mm. You know, and I prayed with people. So, no, no, wait a minute. This is the same woman who was in the bus. Yeah. That same felt one. useless. Felt useless. Okay. So, and we just kept reassured. Just go back out and pray with people. It's God that heals. And look at how the Lord healed right. both of them. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? And it also inspired all of us. Mm -hmm. And that's what God loves to do. Mm -hmm. But I pray with many people. And, you know, one of the biggest, one of the biggest things is, is unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. People, they have unforgiveness towards them. Somebody's hurt them. And I've seen people get healed of things, physical healings. Many times... Many times mental, psychological, many times just, in a sense, casting out the demon, the demon of a lie that's hooked into them, mm -hmm. that's got pulling them down. Bondage. Mm -hmm. It's in there in bondage. Could you give us a blessing? Sure. That would be great. Look into that camera and just let it, let it fly. So, Lord Jesus, 
I pray that everyone who's watching this would feel your healing touch. And I challenge my brothers and sisters that after they see this, go to whoever you see and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to those that you can proclaim the gospel. And just when you see someone, just ask the Holy Spirit, should I say something to this person? Show me who to talk to. And something that I do that's very simple is I walk up to someone and I say, did you get my message? Mm -hmm. And they look at me and they say, what message? And I put my hand out and I say, Jesus loves you. And they're shaking my hand. What happens when you put your hand out? Well, in this case, yeah. we are touching in the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the devil hates, hates it. it. Amen. Oh my gosh. Thank God you so much. You, you gotta come back. You gotta come back. <laughs> okay. And in closing, I choose to end with the same scripture from the segment the first segment we did with Father, because the evil one is an imitator. Pray for discernment to recognize the real deal. First John four verse one through four reads, Beloved, do not trust every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they belong to God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ comes in the flesh, belongs to God. And every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus does not belong to God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist that, as you've heard, is to come, but in fact is already in the world. You belong to God, children, and you have conquered them, for the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And as always, remember to let Christ's light shine through you.